Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips. And today I want to talk about drugs. We're always talking about drugs and why not to take them. In fact, I, we were just joking around before we started this filming that I could just get on the air today and say, um, NSAIDs, don't take them. Bioidentical hormone therapy, don't take it. End of story, tell others, right? But I will give you the details behind why I'm saying what I'm saying. All right, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Let's just start there. They're used to treat inflammation, mild to moderate pain and fever, headaches, arthritis, menstrual cramps, and they work by blocking COX enzymes and reducing prostaglandin production. So what are COX enzymes, what are prostaglandins? Because if you understand what they are and how they work, then you'll understand why this is not a good idea. Okay, so there are two COX enzymes, one and two, that assist in the production of prostaglandins. And prostaglandins are important. They perform a lot of functions in the body. But, uh, and one of them is inflammation that promotes healing, assists in blood clotting of platelets, protects the lining of the stomach. But when you have excessive production of inflammatory prostaglandins, you end up with chronic inflammation, which causes pain, which is why people end up taking all these drugs. Now, how does this happen? Arachidonic acid, which is concentrated in animal foods, is a precursor to the inflammatory prostaglandins that cause all the problems. So Americans, many in westernized countries, eat a high animal protein diet, so a lot of people consequently are in pain every single day. Another thing that contributes to it, in addition to generalized inflammation, is excess weight and other lifestyle factors. So as a result, NSAIDs have become very popular drugs. Now some of the common ones in the class are aspirin, Celebrex, Motrin, Aleve, and the, we've gone from occasional use of these products to get rid of a headache, for example, to the place where they're used every day. In fact, you probably have seen television ads um, showing people who have to take pain pills all day long and then this pain pill's better because you only have to take it once in the morning while this person using this other pain pill has to take two pills every four hours. Well, people shouldn't be taking pills every day for pain. Now, part of the problem is that these types of drugs, Motrin, Aleve, Aspirin, they're available over the counter, and that lends people, lends itself to people thinking that they're safe. But Peter Gotchke, um, MD, you've heard me talk about him a lot from the Cochrane Collaboration, wrote a great book called Deadly Medicines and Organized Crime. And he says the drugs are dangerous, and as a class, they never should have been approved because of the side effects. And in fact, numerous studies have shown that taking these drugs causes risk. A new one says, if you take these NSAIDs, um, it increases the risk of atrial fibrillation, which is now the most common arrhythmia. And the incidence of AFib has been going up. You can watch television and see that it's going up because new drugs are coming out to treat it. So they wouldn't be spending all these millions of dollars on ads if there wasn't a growing audience for those drugs. Now this study was a meta-analysis and showed that NSAID use was associated with AFib 12% um, increased risk, but in new users, the risk goes up to 53%. So these aren't harmless drugs, and the fact that they're available over the counter doesn't make them safe. So here's what our problem is. Obesity and pain are considered the norm. Taking pills to relieve symptoms of pain, considered the norm. And the drugs are over the counter, and even some of them by that are available by prescription. It's not hard to find a willing doctor who will prescribe on demand, so people don't even consider the risks of the medications when they start taking them. So here's the deal. Experiencing pain, not normal. It's a sign that something is wrong. Addressing the symptom, pain, rather than the cause, obesity, inflammation, results in the patients feeling better while they get worse. So if you have an occasional headache, stress, whatever, you know, an aspirin's okay, but it's the daily use, the chronic use of this stuff, but chronic pain that is really causing the problem. We're, we're misusing drugs. I mean, not all drugs are bad and they have their application. We're just misusing them. All right, so on to the next thing, bioidentical hormone therapy. So a recent meeting of the North American Menopause Society featured some presentations that, have, uh, that showed that 2% of women older than 40 years old are taking some type of bioidentical hormone therapy. It's turned into a big business, between one and two billion dollars. But here's the thing, 86% of the people, women, who are taking these hormones don't know that these bioidentical compounded hormones are not FDA approved and 27% don't even know that they're compounded. Now let's talk about bioidentical hormone therapy and exactly what it is, all right? Um, the hormones are first of all marketed as being better because they're closer from a molecular standpoint than their pharmaceutical counterparts. That's why they're called bioidentical. And compounded 
refers to uh, hormones that are customized for the patient by a compounding pharmacy based on the re results of saliva and blood tests. The problem is that the testing uh, methods are unreliable, which makes determination of the dosage just a guessing game at best, and the products have not been shown to be safe or effective. They're assumed to be safe or effective, uh, partly because we assume that bioidentical, it's natural, must be okay. Well, I tell people, you know, poison ivy is natural, but I don't suggest that you go outside and lay in it, right? The other thing is that health professionals tell women that it's safe, and then you have testimonials from women, including celebrities like Suzanne Somers, that promote this stuff, and, and that adds to the misunderstanding. Now, the products haven't been tested, but there are some things that we know uh, that should be taken into consideration. One is that um, until recently, um, compounding pharmac pharmacies have not been well regulated. In 2013, or up until 2013, the regulation was done at the state level, and then a federal law was passed after several people died after taking contaminated products from a compounding pharmacy. Another safety issue is that uh, the progesterone doses in some of the compounding, uh, compounded uh, products are not high enough to protect women against the risk of uterine and other cancers. Well, the researchers presenting at the meeting stated that increased use of compounded hormones was um, in large part due to the findings of the Women's Health Initiative, which was discontinued early because it was shown that the hormones were actually harming people more than helping these women. Uh, but before that happened, 17.9 million women were taking hormones with a $3.9 billion price tag per year. Well, in 2013, the number dropped to 3.7 million. It's estimated that between 21 and 39 million of the current prescriptions are going for HRT, compounded HRT, out-of-pocket expense between a billion and two billion dollars. There are additional costs too because you have to go to the doctor and have the test done and then there are, are expenses associated with the side effects of the hormones. So first of all, just say no to bioidentical hormones. Don't take them. It fix the underlying problem. I keep coming to that as a theme here. You have to fix the underlying problem. The fact that it's possible to build a multi-billion dollar business around a product for which there's no safety or efficacy data that is prescribed by practitioners who know little about it using unreliable tests is one of the reasons our medical system is so dysfunctional. And the fact that millions of women are willing to take these products while knowing nothing about them is one of the reasons why people in this country are getting sicker instead of better. So information is important. If you haven't taken our classes at the Wellness Farm and some of the things that I teach personally to help people gain an understanding of how to look at this information, I strongly advise you to do it. Your life depends on it. Nothing more important than health, in my opinion. All right, that's all for today as, and for the week. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it, and I'll be back to you again on Tuesday with more news.